Okay, great. Good afternoon. I hope you can all hear me okay. I'll try to speak up as possible. Um, so before I start, I think uh, the intro was there. So today I'm not only uh, speaking as Erste Group, but also um, I've included some slides from our work at Mobile Forum. Um, so Mobile Forum is a forum that really focuses on mobile financial services and mainly, you know, uh, banks are the members, but of course there are some providers, payment schemes also members. So I will elaborate on that afterwards. Um, so, um, okay, just a little bit about our bank. So, Erste Group, I joined Erste Group about seven months ago, back in October, uh, prior to that I was working for uh, Lakashi in Spain. Um, and Erste is a kind of a complicated group. So, um, although head office is based in Vienna, uh, we have um, six other countries, so uh, um, seven altogether. So, Austria, uh, Serbia, Slovakia, uh, Romania, Czech Republic, oops. Um, and around 16.2 million customers. But as a whole, it's really complicated because as a group, you need to really um, not only work with local countries, but also as a group as well. So each solution would be, all this a group solution could be different for each, each country. So it's a really complicated in that sense. Um, so when it comes to payments, um, we started looking into it and realizing how would we build the case for payment itself. So from, you know, um, we have heard a lot of speakers all this morning focusing on payments. So, you know, um, it's a really increasing demand from our customers, from the, the, the infrastructure, the payment schemes, to develop a really comprehensive payment strategy. That was the first focus. Uh, and then, of course, we, we could see the payments are really shaping up by not banks, not customers, but some forces outside. We heard both, both of, our, of our speakers this morning from Samsung and also from uh, uh, Payments International. Um, so we would have to identify these players and try to really uh, develop our strategy based on that. This was our focus before we really came up to the strategy for mobile payment. Sorry, this, this uh, clicker is really sensitive. Um, and then based on that, we could then build our, 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 our full comprehensive payment strategy. Um, so the key strategies for us uh, really were to ensuring the, our relevance as a group, um, as a preferred payment, payment uh, provider, because of course, the way things are unfolding now with all the Googles and Apples and Samsungs and what have you, um, if you do not act now as a bank, we're gonna become just a backhand infrastructure provider. And certainly we do not want to do that as a bank. You know, our, our customers are really, our, our assets, they trust in us, they, 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 they invest their money in us, they you know, use us on a daily basis. So or, as much as Google and Apple can really innovate a lot better than us, you know, we, we have this really powerful asset in our hands that we can really use it much better than we do today. So going back to the key issues, um, we wanted to basically uh, uh, look into the, the, the landscape outside as well globally, of payment landscape, then try to you know, map up the current and the future offerings of our local market condition for each country, like I, as I mentioned to you earlier. So the culture of the customer, the customer base, whether it's Android base, uh, uh, um, iOS, what have you. Um, and of course, not to forget the fintechs. We also wanted to make sure that you know, all these uh, disruptors, fintechs are, are stepping into, I mean, 80% of, of all disruption are being done in payments. So we really had to make sure that we really some respect towards them as well. So we want to make sure that we include those as well, identify them, map out. And finally then, of course, the, all, the, all the, um, the, the regulations, PSG2, ISO standards, you know, and of course the payment scheme as well. So um, I guess I ask this question all the time. Um, who will, and, and what will drive payments? And, and pe people always say, is the innovation, is the convenience? To me, I think it's the offering, it's the customer data ownership. I think this is what's gonna drive payments, and it really is at the moment. So the, 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 the bit in the middle, this to me is, is really the key for, for us as a bank to really drive payments and what, what we should be focusing on. I'm just kind of taking you through the whole journey that we did, just so that I can keep you all on board. Um, so why mobile payments? You know, why, why should we go mobile payments? I think it goes without saying that each bank, uh, whether they are in, in this region, or they're in, the, they're in my part of the world, or they're in the States. So um, I think mobile is certainly becoming the main point of an interaction. Everybody is going to mobile first. And of course, it's, this will allow us to have this continuous reliable relationship with our customers, because they are our, our, our most important asset. Um, so 
you know, um, increase new revenue stream, data ownership, uh, of course, OEM pay, so Samsung, Android, Google, um, and of course, including other things such as the wallet, P2P, uh, and value added services. So uh, today, to date, as of uh, end of year 2015, around 5.7 million cards uh, from Erste Group are contactless, although as of 2016 now, each card issued is, is and should be contactless, both Visa and MasterCard. Uh, so we are kind of 50-50 a market. Uh, Visa and MasterCard. Um, so then, idea would be really is to you know uh, shift then from the, those contactless onto mobile, and customer base is really important. As an average, around 70% Android customer base and 30% iOS. So this would really allow us then to have our own pay, as well as you know looking into maybe Apple Pay and Google Pay, what have you. Um, so then, based on that, we could really identify the the key strategic issues we would have to focus on within the mobile payments. So uh, of course, P2P is important. Whether we go down SIM-based solution, and I'll tell you why I'm mentioning this. I know it's a dated issue, uh, dated uh, uh, initiative, um, or tokenized. Whether we go, uh, we, we also launched something called Blue Code. It's a closed loop, uh, closed loop solution. I'll explain that in a, in a bit. Um, we should also focus on remote payments, uh, in-app payments, and of course, not to, not to forget the really important thing. If I want to make sure that my customer carries just a mobile wallet or mobile device on their own, no physical wallet, I would have to ensure that my ATM machines would also accept that device for them to be able to tap and withdraw cash. And it's certainly a much quicker and faster and convenient way to withdraw money than a plastic card. Um, and then, of course, you know, mapping up the, the OEM pay as well to ensure that we, of course, take on board uh, uh, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. I can't really disclose whether we are or, or deny whether we are in talks with them or not. Um, and finally, of course, the, 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 key, the key point here is that payment itself, I think there's no money in payments. I'm going kind of a step ahead of our really two great speakers this morning, uh, one from Samsung and the other one from Netflix International. Perhaps, yes, payments, when you do the payments really, really, really good, but of course, just in payment, there's no money. We need to really have, as a bank, be able to offer more than just payments, so value added services. Couponing, ticketing, ID uh, management, ticketing, uh, transportation. That's the only way we're going to keep our customers from end to end within, within, within our kind of you know, uh, arena. This is the only way to really ensure that we provide this experience to our customers. So how do we do that? So moving from plastic cards onto, onto contact lens, and then of course wristbands and a contact lens sticker that you can stick behind your mobile device. Um, so we try to educate our customers through this. They, they get the habit of tapping rather than inserting their card into the POS terminal. So that was the, the that that was the first phase, and of course, doing that would ensure that then tomorrow when we launch the mobile payments, they will be already prepared to to to, to use a mobile device to tap. Um, now, now I'm going to switch quickly now from Erste into Mobe Forum now. So at Mobe, we uh, back in November, we published this white paper, and we looked into different things such as mobile banks, uh, 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 banks own pay as opposed to Apple Pay or Samsung Pay whether a bank should go for a uh, secure element uh, based solution or HC, host, host card emulation based solution. So a quick comparison. So we do know that as a bank, it's a great, uh, HC is a great option because of course much quicker, time to market. It's, uh, you can, you know, a full end-to-end -end kind of, you know, your own control as to what, how you design it, how you offer it, um, as opposed to a hardware uh, based SE based solution, whether it's SIM based or embedded SE on a device like Apple Pay or Samsung Pay. Um, so we then, you know, came up with this kind of uh, block of charts. We said, it's, of course, secure element base would always be secure. Uh, but of course, it's a lot more complicated. You need agreement with MNOs or with the device manufacturers. Um, security is there, but of course, time to market is, 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 is a lot higher. Um, so just a quick kind of, you know, uh, a comparison between the three pays, Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, and Android Pay. So we do know that Samsung, uh, it's kind of uh, a, a kind of a mix solution in the sense that in Europe at least we do uh, we heard our, our, our colleague from Samsung this morning talking about Spain so my previous workplace um, so the solution there is kind of you know um, Samsung was, were, were quite smart when they came to Europe so this rather than going like Apple Pay they went they wanted the banks with, with already existing mobile payment solutions such as Lakasha for example um, to use the existing TSMs so uh, the solution within uh, Spain at the moment, uh, I believe, is the hardware-based solution where 
you could you could re reuse your TSMs, and the token will be. Uh, it's not really a token; it's a card, a virtual card, downloaded onto the secure element of the of the device, as opposed to Apple or Apple Pay, where you have a token which get that then stored onto the onto the iPhone's uh, secure element. And Android is just a, a HC pure to, uh, token-based solution. Just a kind of you know a, a quick overview for you to see um, where we are with that. And based on that, we also kind of you know um, mapped out this different control factors, if you like. So first one was device control factor. So we know that Apple would always win this war because uh, they have the customer base, iOS lovers, not me. I'm a very much of an Android, Samsung lover. Um, but of course, they have the, 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 the hardware there, the software, Touch ID is there. Uh, and of course, they have so many million cards already on the, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, iTunes already. So they were a lot easier ecosystem for them to manage. As opposed to Samsung, so green ones, by the way, is a full control. Uh, orange is kind of little control. Red is kind of no control at all. Um, so we look at Samsung then. And Samsung, we can see very easily the OS is kind of not there. Hardware is there. Touch ID is kind of coming up with uh, S6 and S7. But the, 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 the OS is not there. It's, 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 uh, it's Google. Um, and, and, and last but not the least, Google, um, um, although they have this, their own their own chips and their own Nexus devices. They have very little control on hardware, but of course, very, very strong control on software. So Android Pay would have really uh, a strong kind of you know, um, 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 lead here. And then, of course, the business control factors it was really, really important uh, because at least if a bank was to go, so we, we always hear this, that as a bank, do I go for my own pay, or do I shake hand with Apple and have Apple Pay, or shake hand with Samsung and have Samsung Pay? It's just really, really complicated as a banker, especially if you're, you know, leading this kind of uh, mobile payments or banking. Which solution should I go for? Really confusing for, for me as a banker. So we kind of, you know, map this out for 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 our uh, readers, our our banking readers, see if maybe this might help them. Um, so. Apple is really a closed loop one because even if you have an Apple Pay, Apple Pay wallet, no other valid wallet could coexist. As opposed to Samsung, who have really kind of, you know, I think Samsung are really trying to uh, understand banks' kind of point of view and, and try to really um, upsell this solution, uh, i.e., Samsung Pay. Uh, and we heard this uh, this morning anyway. But at least with Samsung Pay, my own Erste Bank wallet would coexist. So Android, I would have this opportunity to be able to use, offer my customer Samsung Pay at the same time as, the, uh, as my own Pay. Although, of course, it would be their choice which one they want to choose first to make as, they, as their default payment uh, um, uh, method. And Google is kind of, you know, in, in the kind of gray area at the moment. Um, we heard they had this uh, partnership in, with Ingenico, the uh, post terminal uh, manufacturer, but you know, apart from that, really the only thing is customer data, which is always going to be there because it's Google and they have always had this. So I've, I've talked about this already, which is quickly uh, touching upon this. It's really important for us as banks, I guess. Um, so should I launch my own Erste Bank Pay or should I go shake hand with Apple and do Apple Pay or Samsung Pay or Android Pay? I think there's no right or wrong answer. Um, we really have to find out just exactly how I uh, kind of highlighted to have this strategic key points. Uh, what's my customer base? How many contactless cards do I have? Uh, do I want to uh, only leverage my iOS customers? Can I live without leveraging them? So if that's the case, then I think your own pay is very easy. You can go for Android, and you, know, uh, you can have your Erster Bank pay, or uh, Cash Bank pay, or uh, Chase pay, whatever. Uh, but if you do have a really, really big, a massive iOS customer base, I think you would need to really start talking with Apple. And, and, and I guess it's happening, but it's a difficult one. But I think the, 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 the bit that, that the really, really um, takes lead here is the last one. Um, I think we'd need to really ensure that we are in this arena to ensure we have this customer relationship and we are able to really maintain this relationship. So quickly now talking about what we have done so far with mobile. So there's an there's a, a organization within Austria called Payment Service Austria. They issue debit cards. Also, they are in the processing or in the ATM business. So they have, what they've done, they have done this agreement with all the MNOs in Austria. This is just a learning curve, obviously. It's not the final solution. And what they've done is they've spoken to all these MNOs in Austria, A13 and T-Mobile. And basically, they become like the middle box whereby they would really um, reach out to each bank within Austria. And then you can join their platform, and you're connected. And then, of course, this is a lot easier solution, SIM-based solution, as opposed to maybe three or four years ago that 
we had in Lakasha or uh, other banks also tried it. But this is not a final solution for us. Just a learning curve, just a learning curve for us to ensure that our customers get into a habit of, of using it. And then this is the roadmap we're going to try to follow. And of course, uh, within this uh, roadmap, we have the HC solution. Uh, Apple Pay might well be there as well. Um, just quickly touching on this, is my last slide. Uh, I know I'm running out of time. So, Blue Code. So, this is a solution that we launched uh, a year ago, um, and it's just a pilot still. Um, what this does is basically you can go to the um, kind of selected merchants, participating merchants. You go there, you tell them, I want to pay with Blue Code. They will show you a code. You scan that code with your device, payment is done. Account to account, closed loop payment, just like mobile pay, but very on a much shorter kind of. So we are really exp uh, experimenting all these things, and the final solution that we're going to launch would be a, a, a combination of all this within our Erste Bank Pay wallet. And of course, all this is done by, by innovation. I think it, this is the, the key takeaway here that innovation should be really not a one man job, but it should become a culture. And, and we should really need to compete with all these Googles and Apple and, and, and what have you really would have to start innovating uh, a lot more than what we do today. Thank you very much.